Hello everyone and welcome back to the Star Wars Library, where Star Wars is in print. And today we're going through some comic books. We are in 1995 and we're going to be looking at the first arc of the X-Wing Rogue Squadron series by Michael Stackpole and illustrated by Mike Barron. Uh, now I have them collected in the New Republic uh, Star Wars Epic Collection Volume 2. Uh, I never picked these up when they first came out. This was something I had to get a lot later. Uh, I might have read them from the library back in the day, but I don't remember. So this was really fun to revisit it and to uh, prepare for this review. So like I said, there's several arcs. This is the first one. Uh, Rogue Squadron has headed off to the planet Silfar, or Silfar, whatever, to meet an underground group and basically try and get them to join the Alliance or the New Republic. I think they're the New Republic at this point, because it's five or so years um, after New Hope. So I think they're the New Republic. Anyways, they're attacked, and of course there's a crash landing. Uh, Wes and Tycho get lost in the planet's jungle, and so they're trying to find their way back. They're actually found um, by Targather, who is Leia's uh, former assistant. It actually is revealed to be Winter, um, because she... They, they obviously reveal this, and, you know, because they, they also comment like, Wow, you look a lot like Princess Leia. It's because it's Winter. Um, so basically, Tycho is convinced by her to pose as an Imperial so they can kind of see why uh, this Imperial group has been attacking their world. There's been uh, these Imperials that have shown up. That's why they, they, get, they, get, they uh, get crashed or they, they crash down or whatever. And um, they're basically trying to figure out what the heck's going on here. So while they're doing that mission and they're doing that, Wedge basically convinces um, Elsko Lore or Laura, I think, Loro, whatever. Basically that Rogue Squadron, like, hey, we're a trustworthy group, okay? We're, we represent the New Republic. We are, we're here for you. We're not here to, you know, to, to cause you any harm. We're not the bad guys in this. Um, but, uh, so that's what he's trying to do. And so they're trying to liberate the world. Um, their plans go bad. Um, they're basically trying to to free the planet. It goes wrong. Um, Elsko's right hand um, is actually found to be a traitor. Um, Wedge kind of suspects this. And um, it's proven that, oh, hey, yep, that, that individual is actually, in fact, a traitor. Um, so they go deal with that. Elsko and Rogue Squadron, they stop the Imperials. Um, Tycho and Wes are found in, in winter and they're, you know, everyone comes back together. And basically, Elsko is persuaded to join Rogue Squadron. Um, hooray! That's kind of, that's kind of the first story. It's basically, um, you know, kind of a, uh, who's, who, who done it, who's the traitor kind of thing. So it, it's a, it's a fun story. You know, I, I, um... I remember kind of thinking, because I loved the X-Wing novels, and I'm like, could Michael Stackpole write comics? And some of the stuff that I've read by him, same with here. Like, he's, I don't know, sometimes he, he's off and on, I, I feel. Sometimes I think he, for me, he, he knocks out of the park. Other times, I'm just kind of like, I'm left wanting more. This was one of those stories where I was left wanting more. It just didn't, and again, I know comics are a different medium than novels, Maybe to me, it, it just kind of goes that maybe John or Michael Stackpole is more of a um, is a better novel writer than he is a comic book writer because it is completely different. You know, it's it, it's different when writing a novel versus writing a comic. Um, so I wonder if that's kind of where it feels kind of a little bit more subpar than his other comics or heck, even his novels. Uh, but that's just me. The story's not bad. I don't think it's bad. I just think that it's not, it doesn't give me a whole lot of reason to revisit it. You know, maybe if I go through this trade again, I'm like, oh, okay. It's, you know, just reading it in order. But this first arc wasn't, I don't know. It just didn't, it didn't hook me. Um, ironically, this came out before the, um, the novels. So I don't know, I guess, to, to, to do the whole, you know, is this essential question? Um, I don't think it is, but here's the thing. If you're, if you love Rogue Squadron, more than likely you've already read the Rogue Squadron novels by Stackpole and Alston. If you have, 
I would then go say read these. Read these after you read those, um, or at least the first few, um, just because I think you're going to get more of an idea of who these characters are, and you're going to actually get to know and love the characters, so that that way when you come in to Rogue Squadron, the, the or at least the comics of Rogue Squadron, you then are like, okay, like I, I have an understanding of who Wedge is, I know who, you know, Wes and, and Tycho and all that, like, and Jen, like, I, I know these guys, Honda, like, I know these guys. So now it's, um, now it's a little bit better. I can kind of jump into that. Um, so I would just say, keep that in mind. Definitely the comics should not be the first thing you read. Um, and again, not only publication wise, did this come first? Um, this also came before in chronologically speaking, this comes before the novels as well. So if you go through it your first time, I, I like, you know, whether you're doing it in publishing or, you know, at random order or, or chronological order, um, just keep that in mind. I think that the novels are going to do a better, you know, a better way of, of, of getting you to care more about the characters, but that's just me. So thank you folks for tuning in and I will see you next time with another episode of the Star Wars Library.